Hi guys, and welcome back to the Backstage Bikini Podcast with your hosts Grace and Jade. And we are welcoming Paul Ravella back on the podcast. I think it was the eleventh episode we ever did, Paul, that you actually came on. So to think we were near we're near fifty now. Um, but we brought brought Paul back on uh, today because he had the pleasure as we understand now, um, of coming all the way over to the UK to watch the 10X Ben Weida Amateur and the One Bro Pro Show, where he uh, very successfully and very well done um, qualified his, 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 his athlete, Octavia, won the show. So it, it was nothing short of an honour to see that for you as well, Paul. But um, sort of first impressions out of the gate, Paul, what was the show experience for you like compared to what you're used to? Uh, lovely experience. I, first of all, I'd never been to Maiden's Head. I'm very familiar with London, but I I loved the little, little village they had there. Mm-hmm. Um, our Airbnb was convenient. There was a nice, you know, there was plenty of restaurants and pubs around to just kind of be, you know, in. And then we were able to walk to the venue. It was, you know, or it was like a four or five quid Uber. It was pretty cheap. So uh, I, I would definitely come back to Maiden's Head. Um, the venue was the lighting was good, you know, and the backstage area was ample. And that's really, really what you want for an athlete, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I was a little shocked it wasn't more athletes for a pro qualifier in Europe. I thought it was going to be bigger. I know it's earlier in the season. Um, so I don't know. Maybe there's a shift going on in the sport. You know, it's the, sh- the shows have been a little bit smaller here too early in the year. Mm-hmm. And I know they're, they tend to come in waves. But overall, thrilled. I, I would I would love to come back for yeah. it. Yeah. Amazing. And of course, huge success with Otavia. We'll get into sort of the placings of the pro show um, in particular, but huge su- success with Otavia and actually being able to be there in the audience and and watch her take that. How is that? <laughs> I mean, I know. I watched well, you, you sat next to me, so you got to feel my anxiety. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think I remember looking over at you before the show started and I just said, I don't know what to expect because... Yeah. I, you know, I know that Otavia looked my, she had my favorite look of the season. Mm. She was worried. She's like, coach, they'd like us to be a lot harder over here. And I was like, well, Mm. we're not doing what they typically do. We're going to do what the standard is and we're going to hope that it's upheld. um, And hopefully it goes in your favor. So I said, I said, she could be last or first. Right. Um, And then honestly, as a coach, like she had told me before the show, she's like, coach, I'm pretty exhausted. We only started together after the Olympia. Um, and she had already um, been accepted to do the Arnold. So we didn't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You can't no. opt out of that. I, I would never do that with an athlete. So I said, you know, we'll do that. Um, and this was actually the show that we targeted to punch her ticket. I said, the likelihood of winning one of the Arnolds is pretty low. Mm-hmm. Um, but I said, this will be the first show where we really have a shot to get to the middle. So that that, that was the goal. And, um, you know, being there in person, once she was in first call out, you know, looking up there, I just, my, I kept just going to her, you know, the, the naked eye test. I just kept looking past other girls and going, man, her shape, her fullness, you know, she's, um, and they just, I think immediately she got moved around more than any athlete. She kind of got moved out, then in, then over, then across. And then the last turn of prejudging, they swapped her and Francesca and put her in dead center out of seven. And I probably like got, you know, I think I told you my heart rate got a little <laughs> higher and then I'm like, all right, end it, end it, you know? So yeah, obviously it went my way, but at no point was I like super comfortable, not even, you know, when they were doing the confirmation round, which was literally 20 minutes later, you know? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. That was an incredible win. And, and I was watching on the live stream, but even then you could see Octavia was, was standing out. Um, you, Your eye was kind of drawn a little bit to Francesca as well, but I Her just- looked really good. Yeah. yeah was just everything she really really ticked the box especially in the in the lower half as well um so I'm delighted for you it was a really really good win um there how I suppose did because you took her on like post Olympia did anything really change in in this prep I suppose compared to previous ones is there anything that you've changed drastically from our previous coach um you know I'm a macro based coach so that took a minute to get used to um she's I'll, I'll give her all the credit in the world she is a you know, for lack of a better term, I'm a robot. Like she just does what's asked. And basically, you know, from the time we started together, she just was checking in on time. She gave me all the feedback I needed. Um, 
and at first it was all about conditioning because she initially put on a little too much body fat after the Olympia. So first, our first job was just to get her into condition. Honestly, her look at the Arnold, I was thrilled with like at the Arnold, mm -hmm. Ohio, man, I was looking at her all day going, gosh, like you could be in that top six. And I still, you know, at the, in that lineup, I just think she's still got a little work to do to get that reputation up there. Yeah. Um, but structure and muscularity wise, she's as good as it gets. Yeah. Um, so with her, it was just literally getting her into shape. And then once we did that, then we got the fine tune between the UK and here. UK, they actually told us we came in a little too hard, right? So we backed it down a little bit, mm -hmm. um, UK Arnold. And so yeah. Yeah, this yeah. was a fuller version of her than the UK mm -hmm. Arnold. Um, so yeah, she's been an amazing um, addition. And the really nice thing is now we've got some opportunity to like take some recovery and be strategic about jumping into some shows before the Olympia to get mm -hmm. more feedback, maybe even do like a road to the Olympia, come over to the States type of thing. That's really what I want her to do. Um, you know, and, and, and I told her, and said in my mind, my job now is to get you into that, that first call out at the Olympia. I just think yeah. she has, not everyone has the potential to do it. She does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Recently has she, and I, I had an eye on her last year. I think she took the Italian pro qualifier that's when she really really stood out to me and I think she's just gotten better and better especially since you've kind of take her over as well so it's yeah. exciting First, really uh you know I, I thought she looked great before I think you know the, the thing that I I have a plan I have a very specific vision for each competitor and that's that's what she's told me she really likes like sometimes she felt like there wasn't something specific mm -hmm. um so you know, with me, it's, you know, I get beat over the head by the judges every single weekend. Like, this is what we want. This is what we want. So like, I, that's my vision for her. Um, and she's never beaten Francesca. She had yeah. just been beaten by Tatiana like two weeks before. So that's why I think when you saw her get emotional, I don't think she went in there like expecting to win or even, you know, I think she was just wanting to get compared. So to get the win for her was, was a big deal. Impressive. Didn't know that about um, Francesca because obviously they're, very close you know they're both from the same same place they're both yeah there was a lot of italians in that lineup and i think you know you're, you you want to beat your countrymen you know like it's like a it's like <laughs> yeah. a pride thing yeah so i kept you know we went out to uh the nice the other nice thing about that show is it was done so early we were done by like 5 p.m mm -hmm. so we all got cleaned up and went to london for sushi and i just kept saying you're like the the italian champ you're the europe champ you know i kept you know giving her I, I would consider her now the european champ um yeah front runner for sure well with phoebe out of the picture for the year she announced she's taking some time off yeah um yeah i mean there's a lot of good competitors over there you know allison testu was in that lineup we hadn't seen her in a while yeah everyone was curious they kept her outside the top five she was in that first call out but she never got moved around mm -hmm. uh it was clearly between francesca tatiana and uh otavia those those were the ones that they i think had the most you know comparison yeah yeah for sure and like we said like we were sat watching um and i think it was tatiana and otavia that were swapped in weren't they just before mm -hmm. they moved everybody around and that was when otavia was moved directly into the middle and we were just waiting for it for, because from the back otavia just had that fullness that the, the upper glute, the lovely round sort of um full-bodied muscle from the back and i don't know tatiana just came a little across slightly less full slightly she looked less. really good from the front yes um, yeah you know really sharp from the front but when she turned to the back i mean francesca and otavia just had like Stood the out. 3d glutes yes and yeah and i think you know in my mind francesca's legs were a little thinner and otavia has a little more density so it creates that balance yeah um and the feedback i got from maz was you know you could bring her in just a little bit sharper but the same fullness and i said okay, okay you know so it's going to be a, a completely different body by the time we get to the Olympia because she's got, you know, six months now um, yeah. to work on that. And plenty of rest as well. I think a, a lot of rest because mm -hmm. the, the Olympia run through to the Arnold's and then doing the Arnold UK, it's, it's a lot. And and then the one bro pro show, it's, it's a long time to sort of prolong any kind Once of these competitors condition. start to have some success yeah. and they start doing more shows. It's very, it's a very slippery slope. I ran into it with Daraja after six years She's just done. She's taking the whole year off and mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're going to target some early shows next year 
um, because she wants to still win the Olympia. But after six years of doing the Arnold, the, you know, the Olympia, the, you know, you're doing these back and forth shows mm -hmm. to build your resume, it, it gets challenging. And so with Otavia, that's going to be the goal this year is to make sure she gets, and I love the fact that they've moved the Olympia up to October now. Yeah. When it yeah. was in December and then it was, you know, now it's starting to get that separation from the rest of the shows. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit more space, a little bit more breathing room for the athletes to actually recover before you're going into the likes of the Ohio and things like that. So yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But what did you think of the amateur, amateur sort of presentations? We'll you go know, I think pro, but... you were, I don't know if you're sitting with me, but you know, coach, mm -hmm. my other coach, Steven, who's had a lot of, you know, success in Europe. He's had some bikini pros and, um, he's kind of told me what to expect, um, I was a little thrown. I think there was some placings in the amateur that I thought would have been more appropriate for um, the pro card girls that were maybe a little less muscular placing ahead of girls that were more muscular. Um, but without having those as my athletes, I didn't really dig too much into it. I thought the girl that won the overall was the clear winner, uh, yeah. the German girl. Yeah, uh, she that. stood out from the beginning. Mm -hmm. There was a girl in class A in a red suit and a girl in class D in like a purple suit that I thought those three would be fighting for the overall two of those girls didn't even win their class. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I still have a lot to learn about the NPC over there, but um, the, the really neat thing for this show was that they took the the girl that just got her pro card. And what was funny was I was backstage with Otavia. They literally brought her backstage and put her in the lineup and walked her out on stage. She got zero like break yeah uh, you gotta be ready and it was uh marnie last year yeah. uh, and you bet she was ready with it with <laughs> everything because i feel like they're learning it before they even got their pro card you know and uh it, yeah it's a mental thing to just go straight like with the routine because it's what 90 seconds or yeah. something you have to be ready um yeah. yeah it's amazing to see but congrats to her we'll pull up her page in a moment i think she's 21 um 21 years old so yeah i actually had a I, I recorded a video you know when you go to these shows you start to learn to like there's certain moments in the sport that are really cool so i was recording the the girls that were lined up for the overall when they were announcing the pro card winner and i put it in my story she actually messaged me i sent her the video mm -hmm. um and she's only 21 yeah. i was like wow like yeah she's a baby so She's got, she's got some growing to do to fit the criteria, but mm. man, she's, um, you know, you can't, you can't coach structure like that. She's got that really crazy structure. No. Yeah. I remember seeing, um, checking pictures. It, it just sort of arose on my feed on, on Instagram. And I remember seeing her checking pictures. Cause I think she did a regional out in Europe. Um, I can't remember which one she did actually, uh, it'll be somewhere here actually, but I found her Instagram. Instagram and I thought that is damaging yeah. that is dangerous <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a dangerous dangerous physique and just at such a young age as well like the the longevity that she could now potentially have in this sport having achieved such an incredible physique already at the age of 21 is just outstanding it is yeah, mm. like nice canvas to build on as well well, yeah. look at the progress she made between these two photos. So whatever, you know, what is she, 19 and 21 or something like? Yeah. Already, you know, added a significant amount of tissue. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's about a year and a half between those photos. Yeah. Well, I, I, I saw her coming. I didn't realize she was going to be doing the UK show. Uh, but the minute I recognized, I was like, this is this is a clear winner. I, I already had her, honestly. And like Paul said, the minute she walked out on stage, I think she just stood out structurally she was very very hard to challenge very hard beautiful posing as well mm. she was ready for it i think like i said yeah and she's also like a beautiful girl like that really does you know it does help like when you just got you just can't take your eyes off someone on stage so mm. yeah it'll be it'll be fun to follow her career now you know yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. any other standouts in the overall for you paul or anybody that you think may potential ha potentially have potential in the sport to turn pro. I mean, it was it was a good lineup, but I know you said that there was a few rogue placings. But anybody in particular that stood out for you? Uh, let me look here. Obviously, yeah, she was the one in left of center in the purple. Yeah. Um, you know, the young lady that she was splitting middle with, uh, uh, another one. It almost looked like her before she added the muscle, right? So I yeah. think what I think they were doing was really going based on a lot of the shape they wanted to see that like you know 
it's the word that I've been hearing more, you know, every year something's different. And this year it's been the word hourglass. They really yeah. want to have girls have an hourglass shape. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what they're going with is that nice natural curve. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm telling you, the girl that got second in, in both of those other classes, I thought they would have been challenging the Selena more. Yeah. Um, all the class winners looked great. You know, it's a testament. It wasn't like a huge show. Some of the classes, you know, yeah. didn't even have, I think there was one with like three or five, but yeah. then a couple of the class had like 10, but the overall was very high, high quality and high caliber. So I'm sure all these girls will go to the next show to try to get their pro card. You know, they're, they're, they're knocking on the door. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I recognize Jen, Jen on the far right, actually. I know she was pretty far out, but her structures changed so much since the last time she was on stage I don't know whether she's had about a year out um but it I, I followed her Instagram recently and it she mentioned that this was a bit of a redemption year for her to come back and really sort of prove herself so that was nice to see her yeah. in the lineup as well and then yeah. Anya Limba yeah and there's a there's another show in uh Hungary coming up right like so in like three weeks so I think some of these girls might go do that yeah yeah absolutely because we have our national circuit that we do over here and, and i'm learning about the, the the european yeah yeah there's really loads of shows like it's just kicking off i guess so much to come um but yeah right well will we go through the um placings yeah um who are you are paul hey, love it <laughs> amazing <laughs> he was stood was at the fun. back he was stood at the back of the uh like auditorium the space the whole time all, uh, all once, of... <laughs> yeah I, like... once once she got moved to the middle i could not stand it and then um was it valentino the 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 the, the coach mm -hmm. he came and sat with me yeah mm -hmm. at the back yeah, yeah. and so, this is this your first olympia qualified athlete for this year no then my third okay so third, who... uh in November, I had um, Brittany Shulman. She won the the Ben Weeder, and then a couple of days later, Ariana won the Atlantic Coast. Nice. But I suppose in this year, in, in twenty twenty four, it's our first one. Is it first now? calendar year? Yeah, but the the qualification for the next Olympia started in September last year, October. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And who? Just while we have you on the podcast, who else? Do we have running for the qualification this year? Oh gosh, this next week in um Utah, I'll have Brittany Hamilton and she's oh, looking incredible. Exciting. Um, so and then Lana Dunbar is going to be coming out this summer. Um, I just had a girl uh, named Christy M. Sandy. Mm -hmm. She got sixth at the clash. So that was our first show together. And the feedback on her was there they loved her. They just want to see her make some you know, a little bit of conditioning, which won't be a problem for her. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's um and I've got some girls that are newer pros that that I'd like to get in there. Um, but you know, getting out. qualified for the Olympia is such a gosh, it's you know, it's such a needle in a haystack it's moment. More prestigious, isn't it? Like in the last year with without the point system, like it. Um yeah. it'll be nice to see Lorna come back as well. I remember watching Lorna turn pro and the like the development in her physique, Lorna Dunbar from the time she turned pro to the next time she presented. And I remember the red suit and the iconic back pose transition as well. So she's had about a year yeah. off, hasn't she? She took the whole year off. Yeah. We started yeah. prep late last year. So she's, you know, we're looking at, actually, we're not too far off now. Mm -hmm. um, so in the year that she did the Olympia, I had a Japanese competitor named Sally Kato. She's, um, we've been chatting about, you know, getting a qualification for her too this year. She's another one that's got a very, you know, uh, you know, like Otavia, like, like there's just no flaw. It's great structure, great muscularity, great balance and flow. So she's another good one that when she hits the stage, it's hard to beat her. Um, so, you know, depending on if she decides to compete, you know, she hasn't committed yet, but yeah, Lana's going to be a fun one to see because she's put on some more size and I feel like the division is going her direction. Like they want to see that more, you know, yeah. statuesque, hourglass physique yeah yeah and that's the thing that like structure only play well structure plays a huge part in bikini um as it does in in most classes but i think there is an element of control in terms of how you actually mold that structure in terms of muscularity and we have that space now where we didn't necessarily have that maybe a decade ago 
So, and I, I personally saw it and the, the differences in terms of where that tissue lands, how it lands on a frame in, in the pro show, you could see, cause there was some, some competitors who were heavily, heavily mus- like muscular where you had Octavia, who's quite a slight frame com- compared to the likes of uh, even yeah. Alison, for example. Um, so it's interesting really seeing how, how that stands against each competitor as well in terms of how much that stands out it's quite a yep. it was quite interesting to see because that I could have probably split it in yep. terms of looking at the pro show in terms of muscularity and density but yeah. oh yeah and that's why I said when I came out because I was backstage watching them pump up and I'm looking at some of these girls going my gosh like if that's the standard we are not fitting it you know yeah um I think the young lady that got fifth was at Lisa Reith Yes. I mean, she carries an incredible amount of Chrissy Taylor. She carries an incredible amount of muscle, right? So mm-hmm. like if, you know, sometimes you get into these lineups and if there's more of that, you kind of get overshadowed. Yes. So that's why I was like, okay, I was just, when I heard her for first call, I was like, oh, cool. Okay. Now we're getting compared and that's, you know, that's what you want. hundred mm-hmm. percent. So the scorecard, I think you've got it up already, Grace. Scorecard was pretty, well, I mean, it was clear win, very clear win. First and second, they don't tend to do. Uh, so another thing that's quite different, Paul, that you notice, like they don't tend to really do prejudging and then separate finals. It's all very much sort of flows into one. They they do the call outs. They they make sure that they see all the girls in the call outs and then straight on to not even confirmation rounds. It's it's almost like they just re represent the first call outs and second call outs, but work backwards in the UK. Was that something that was sort of threw you off a little bit as well? Yeah, so typically the way they judge in the states, they with the pre-judging, they'll bring out their first call out. It's either six or eight, somewhere in that range. And then the second call out, they might even keep one or one girl or two girls from the first call out out there and then bring out another six or seven. And then when they get to the rest of the call outs, second, third, fourth call outs, they'll reverse it. They'll go, okay, now they're gonna bring out, say, sometimes it'll be like five through ten. Mm -hmm. you know and so they'll bring those competitors out compare them then they'll bring out just the top four Mm -hmm. and then so they you know that's kind of what i was waiting for and then after this show after they did the final call out they just said okay we're done so you know that made me feel better you know because (laughs) the longer they're on stage the more they have time to change their mind yeah so when 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 they've made their mind way you want it to be you don't want to see them more Mm -hmm. you know kind of only bad things can happen um so yeah and then you know, the nice thing about the straight through format, that's what I call it when they do finals right after prejudging. Mm-hmm. They don't really need to do a confirmation round. At the, at the shows in the States, if they do prejudging at 10 and confirmation at 6 p.m., I mean, a physique can change drastically in a few hours. Yeah. Um, and what they'll often do if it's, if it's, you know, if it's close in the morning, they won't really make up their mind. They'll be like, okay, this is how I see it, but we're, we're going to, we want to see them at finals. Mm-hmm. And someone can come back flat. Someone can come back full. Someone can fix their tan. And all of a sudden you're going, okay, what now, what are they going to do? Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it definitely, and, and as a, as a coach and as a competitor, that's what you want. You want them to take their time, get it right, pick them apart. And yeah. when you walk up to the table after the show, you want them to be able to say, Hey, this is why we did it. Yeah. And that's what the judges are great. And that's, those are the shows I go to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. More feedback, the better. Like, so you know, about the eyes thing, you don't just want them to make the decision, but actually really, really hone in on, on the finer details as well and then give that feedback so i think that that is quite good in a way um but yeah really really interesting result and it's great to see the girl that won the pro card get ninth as well i think that goes she back did to very well like mm-hmm. off the structure thing yep. like that really carried her through there and mm-hmm. um, yeah she just needs size like when she got on that stage it was just very clear that she you know she was a few kilos smaller than most of the top girls but yeah. structurally, she was as good as anybody up there. Yeah. Mm. Anna Setlack as well. I hadn't actually ever seen her compete in person, but she was she was a nice frame. I think a little bit too conditioned, maybe um, through the legs. Quite a lot of quad sort of separation yes, Steven, when she's transitioning. Stephen had told me about her. He knew he knew who she was. <laughs> yeah. um, his client Chloe, I think, had competed with her. So he was telling me when I saw her, conditioning was very good. Um, she was also still very full, a yeah. little bit kind of veiny, um, but just structurally, when you stand her next to someone like Francesca or Ottavia, 
they have a little bit of a shorter torso. Her torso was a little longer mm -hmm. and that can kind of throw off the, the balance. Yeah. Can make, because I know like the sort of word or the phrase is almost that stringy look when you're not quite as full. Yeah. I can only imagine taller athletes struggle with that. Um, just to, I know Laura Lee's had feedback where she's come in a little bit too, too lean and too slight and it's yeah. made her look less full. So I suppose the taller you are, the, the more difficult it is. But um, no, it was it was great. It was a great show to watch. Tatiana, I, I love her structure as well. Like you said before, Paul, I think from the front, she's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Just a I mean, little She's going to be fighting for it, I'm sure, in Hungary uh, between her and Francesca. I don't know if any other girls will jump into that show, but you got to figure those are probably your front runners. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. If you don't mind, they do like yeah. to just really get her. Yeah, I, I, you know, she's she's competed in the States quite a bit. So mm -hmm. um, she actually was at Tampa Pro last year. She was in the top four, which was uh, Ashlyn, mm -hmm. Ariana, her, and, um, gosh, India Paulino. Yeah. So her you know looking at her at that show she was just a little a touch too hard mm -hmm. um and so she has that potential to come in really 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 hard mm -hmm. so it's for her it's going to be about and i you know i don't know the difference between the arnold uk and this show her glutes seem to be just kind of not there like the the the, the fullness yeah so I, I don't know I if it was how she was posing Sometimes you can over arch in that back pose and flatten your glutes out. I don't, I, again, I don't know. I, don't, I haven't paid super close attention to her, but I remember her at Tampa last year and thinking like she had fuller glutes. And when she turned around at this show, I was like, okay, they're not, they're, they're not intimidating me. Yeah. No. Definitely no. stretched a lot through, through the hamstrings. We might be pulling it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, stood next to Octavia and Francesca, it was, it was just too obvious that she was lacking that fullness in the back because of how, round and full and full bodied uh, i mean francesca's glutes have always been phenomenal as yeah, but well. she did end up in second so like she yes. was she was right there yeah yeah very 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 yeah very I mean, it's like you said all about the the density and the the lower body with francesca like you can even see it here i know it's not a, a proper picture but she's got a shorter torso and longer legs um yeah. so that yeah they're they they do have that appearance yeah um, Oh, Francesca up as well. It'd be good to see her. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, you know, I, she bigger. was a, she was a perennial top European competitor a couple of years ago. She won all the shows mm -hmm. and even did well in the States. She won some shows over here. So, it, you know, as soon as I saw her name on the list, I was very curious to see how she was going to look. And I was very impressed. She looked really, really good. Yeah. yeah she had some time out as well. Cause I haven't seen her compete I, in a little while. I don't think while. she competed last year at all. No. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I notice I I always remember her as being like looking up to her, being like, wow, her back, her lats just always stood out. But I think there's a lot more balance to her physique now. It's nowhere near as overpowering. And it was when yeah. she was getting quite popular and around the ESA time when when that was um a big Yeah, she she might have been a top ten Olympian at one point. I, I just remember her doing like top at the Arnold, top, like yeah. all the shows. Every time you saw her, she was in the mix. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing how she gets on um, this year as well. Really, really nice shape. I love it. Yeah, but yeah, if you look there, even there at her back leg in that pose, it just, I don't yeah. know if it's the way she's holding that. Yeah. Um, see how her back knee is kind of twisted away? That's something yeah. I teach my girls. You don't want that okay. leg being farther away, but it, 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 it does throw off her, her balance there a little bit. I see what you mean. Because it almost makes it look more slight than yeah. yep. the, the imposing leg and obviously yep. again you're talking so about i always teach the girls to keep your toes pointed the same direction because that back leg she had her toes kind of rolled back mm -hmm. like that um but man her shoulders and glutes i think what she did was she took some time off and put some more muscle on because she look, looks a lot more dense to me mm -hmm. yeah um, no it'll be exciting to see them because it's nice to have francesca back in the mix obviously otavia's hit the ground running uh well and truly and and Tatiana as well. Lisa Reith is another one as well. She, especially in the shows that we've seen in, in Europe, especially. Um, and I'm sure, has she competed in the US? I feel like she has. But she she was placing top five quite consistently, top six quite consistently. Um, she's, you've already said it, Paul, but incredibly dense. Like there's a lot of muscle. And I don't know how long she's been training, but it certainly looks like she's had a good amount of 
years building that structure. Um, well, and you can fine tune that over the course of a season. She can, you know, she can either, mm-hmm. you know, f- flatten herself out if she needs to, or she can peak differently or she, you know, so it's, it's easier to, to manipulate more muscle <laughs> than it is to, when you don't have enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she, she did actually compete at the Olympia. I don't know if you said that, Jade. Lisa. Yeah. She qualified. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, yeah, well, you know, now you've got that Hungary show. Mm-hmm. Um, and they got the new rules now that I really love where when the list comes out, that's the list. There's no changing it. Yeah. Yeah. So you get to, you get to look forward to a show all week instead of just waiting to see who's going to jump in. Yeah. I think at the, from a consistency standpoint as well for professional athletes, I think it's, it's very, it's more expected for you to map out your year, isn't it? As, as opposed to an amateur who might manipulate their look in, in different shows and jump into different regionals, as we call them. But as a professional athlete, I think that expectation of having your year set and intention yeah. set in terms of what shows you're showing up at. And like you say, you know who you're coming up against then. Absolutely. Yeah, and so think- this was this was the Arnold in Ohio. And they, they said she was a little too hard. They wanted her just a little like, like the rear delts were a little crispy. Mm-hmm. Um and I mean, what I mean is like, if you watch her, see the rear doubt yeah, kind of flex yeah. now yeah. they'll say that. And and sometimes you got to go, okay, but would that have made a difference in this mm-hmm. lineup? You know, cause the lineup at the Arnold Ohio was just insane. Like it was Laura Lee and Amy were the top two. So um, I don't think on this day she was beating them no matter what I did to her physique. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was just, you know, this was my first time getting eyes on her in person and I was kind of blown away. I, I, cause every time I'd seen her at a show, she did a show with Daraja in Dallas and she had done a couple shows where she was in the first call out and my eye never went to her. So I was, yeah. you know, I was very, very happy when I saw this look. I said, this is, this can be a top 10 Olympia look. This is the, the, the shoulder width, the, she has mm-hmm. a really dense upper glute, which is like very hard to get in, in the mm-hmm. sport. Um, and she just has like, you know, a striking look on stage. She, she just draws your eye in. So, yeah. And she's so strong. I'm telling you, when we train, I'm like handing her weights and I'm like having to do the math in my head because they're kilos. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's like <laughs> shoulder pressing like, you know, you know, 20 kilo dumbbells. And dumbbells. I'm like, Man, mm-hmm. yeah. Awesome. Love I, f- I feel like we do that in, in sort of the UK, especially. I think the training sort of ethos and the training sort of, um, introduction very much so is it's definitely mine is that you pack on as much weight and you control that weight in 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 the best way you can yeah be accurate in terms of your training but get as strong as you can to build quality tissue um but i mean you can see it like you say she's she's stunning as well on stage like lovely lovely posing yeah that's one thing i am gonna have her work with daraja on her stage presence as far as like you know, mm-hmm. her, she steps a little bit hard. She mm-hmm. steps at some funny angles. There's some moments where you're just like, okay, did you mean to do that? So she's got to work on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, so for the first Arnold, she was 53 kgs for the, the, the show we just did in the UK, she was 52. So mm-hmm. you'll, you'll say like, well, but you were a kilo down. How are you not harder? Well, we were more aggressive filling her out. Yeah. So the nice thing is the lean. So there you see like, like the difference it just looks like those glutes are almost like detached from her body they're so full mm-hmm. that doesn't happen if i don't give her 300 carbs and she even had a steak the night before the show um you know and then she ate on show day the show wasn't till four so we were just every two three hours i'd go look at her and i'd be like yep keep eating keep eating so yeah um now i will say i did get a little worried backstage because the lighting was so bad oh my <laughs> gosh the lighting was like it was like a at the basketball back gym stage. oh my yeah i I looked over at, um, I remember I looked over at Tatiana and I was like, it looks like she didn't even prep. So I walked out and told Steven, I go, I don't know. But as soon as they all walk out under those lights, I'm like, you couldn't see their abs. You couldn't see it. But yeah, as soon as they walked out on stage. Yeah. So lighting. Yeah, is everything. I think the, the lighting was different at the back of the stage. So where the actual like sort of yeah. one row pro show sign yeah. is, you yeah. th- they stood back there and you couldn't really see anything other than a silhouette if that and then you walked in and it's like it completely revealed the physique like straight before your eyes but there's a sushi yeah. well and that's <laughs> the, the other the, you know the other exciting thing for me as a coach with her is her celebration meals are protein she does not drink alcohol 
She just wanted to go have sushi. And then she kept ordering like chicken skewers. Like that's what she wanted. Um, and she's already checked in with me a couple of times. So yeah, she's going to do very well. I think she just needed the mental break of not having like another show in three weeks and another show. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I think you loaded, was it 250 carbs? So you increased the load, didn't you? Between the UK yeah. Arnold and yeah, this show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that you can do that. The leaner you get, the more aggressive you can be with food. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I was here in person, yeah. so it really helped to see her before bed Friday night, first thing Saturday, she went and got her tan, came back. And then that's when I got excited. I have the pictures on my phone. I mean, you know, you, you, you learn like when your athletes are on, you can, it's like, they, they hit a pose and like, I literally will get the chills and be like, like, let's go. Like, you know, memory serves like Daraja the first, the first time she got first call outs at the Olympia. I remember that morning, you know, just being like, holy crap, can we start the show right now? Like, and that's how I felt when I saw her that morning, I was like, but it was like <laughs> nine, 8 AM. I, we had till 4 PM. So she was going to hit the stage. Um, so I just had her like take a walk every time she ate and just kept her kind of stable there was no need to do anything drastic and i even told her i said you know part of the advantage of the way i peak people is that if you're doing anything with sodium or fluid manipulation you're pulling water diuretics you tend to get worse as the day goes on so you'll look Mm -hmm. great in the morning but by three four in the afternoon you might be really looking flat um whereas we every time we eat we just look better and better and better Mm -hmm. yeah this was a cool moment i didn't um this whoever recorded this was was good i can only imagine the the feeling as a coach you know when you're making you're making big calls for like it's it's an olympia qualification at the end of the day and and it's seeing that in person you know seeing the food do its thing and every little decision matters having her eat a steak the night before was was a tough call because we had already had 250 carbs i felt she was flat luckily i had steven with me now steven you know you start to get in your own head as a coach when someone looks good and and he's like, just give, you know, you know, she's going to look better if you give her the steak. I said, all right. So we went and got a steak. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, and she just had her steak and like some rice cakes. It was quite funny. <laughs> the waitress was like, what's happening? You, know? <laughs> Are you sure you don't want potatoes? No, she's like, no oil, no butter, no nothing on the steak, you know, like pretty clean steak, but um, mm-hmm. something about like red meat and, and, and a little bit of fat. I just find yeah. Just get your digestion going. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing like using the bathroom on show day. It's just, you know, it's and and honestly, it like really changes the um the the way the athlete feels on show day. They're not tired. They're not exhausted. The sh- when the show is over, they don't feel run down. They're not starving. So, no. you know, and that can really set you up for success for multiple shows if you got multiple shows to do. Mm. Just admiring that glute there, Grace. I'm yeah, I'm going to see that, that step there that's one thing that where she steps a little too hard. Position, it just kind of drops, but yeah. Yeah, and if you look at, if you compare this to the um to the Arnold Ohio, mm. she actually is much fuller and rounder here, mm. which is because mm. I could feed her more because we were, you know, down a kilo, which, so 52 kilos on her height is a lot of muscle. She's like 5'3". Yeah. Um, so that's like 116, 115 pounds in US, like she is i mean very muscular I, it's hard to, to tell when you don't see these girls up close in person but if you look from her quad to her glute to her shoulder they're all perfectly balanced and that's that's what i think that last turn when they moved her in um it was odd because i felt like they swapped her and francesca francesca was in the middle but then francesca ended up in third so i was like wait okay yeah it wasn't clear to me what they were doing mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's interesting now you've actually identified that that back leg as well. Um, the the difference between hers and Francesca's um, sort of balance if you just split the body in half at the navel and just look at the balance front to back in terms of the leg yeah. placement and the foot positioning, it's it is it makes a difference. And you're talking pro level physiques at this point. It's an invite to the Olympia that those things aren't overlooked. So she's um she's kind of superstitious she doesn't post pictures before the show uh, you know nice. so that picture she posted of the silhouette that was sebastian took that of me posing her and she posted that um because you know, you can't see anything it's just basically her silhouette um mm-hmm. but yeah yeah and that's steven's leg on the couch there <laughs> <laughs> i must yeah. say i thoroughly enjoyed your instagram stories as well paul 
like just just you and Stephen and the relationship you have and obviously meeting you both in person as well like because I know Stephen covers a lot of the European shows doesn't he up and well yeah he has done um and he he was talking quite a lot about sort of the the difficulties that we have as as sort of UK athletes as well in in emulating what the US has in terms of standard and standardizing the look across the board um it's something that we are trying desperately to not just address but just educate um and, and we're still learning ourselves by no means are we experts but it's it's nice to have you guys here to comment feedback observe and and see how different it is because i think sometimes it it almost comes across like we're just excusing ourselves to a to a degree but i, I do think that having that insight having your input and and the information that you have having seen the consistency across the board in the US now, um, I, I very much think that it's something that we needed this weekend. So it was nice to have your your feedback on the day, watching the athletes, watching it live and just sort of observing the differences. Yeah, well, it all starts with the judges. You know, so Maz, who does a lot of the head judging, Maz Ali um, over there, and, and oftentimes they'll send Tyler or they'll send Bill Sibilia or Jack Sullivan. So they... Uh, Becky does a lot, you know, so yeah. those judges, the key is to really go talk to them and get the feedback because they'll tell you what they want. Now, what I'm hoping, you know, with Otavia winning all the girls from second to 17th or whatever are going to look down at her and go, okay, that's what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they had put a completely strided shredded girl in first, which mm -hmm. a lot of that happens over in Europe, then girls see that and that's what they emulate. Yeah. So it all starts from the top down. It starts from the Olympia champion, the Arnold champion. Now, you know, now you're show champions. And so, you know, this might be a turning point this year for girls. Um, even the shows we've had here clash, mm -hmm. the girl that won was great shape, not the hardest, yeah. not the most muscular, um, you know, and, but just a beautiful overall look. And so you start to see that every weekend and you start to, you know, even as a coach now, I can just tell, okay, this girl's got the, 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 the look that they're going for mm -hmm. right right now so yeah yeah and we're getting good at that as well Trey. I'd like to think we're, we're getting a good eye yeah 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 because I think I think because coaches and and sort of athletes here are aware that there is a difference it's almost like they pick the athlete up and put them in the environment that is going to be best suited that to them so pick them up and put them in an environment where the athletes are going to be harder they're going to be denser they're going to be more muscular as opposed to doing what you've just said paul and looking at the reason the person has won the reasons what's the rationale what's the feedback what is the look that they have created that the judges wanted on the day instead of picking your athlete up and put, putting them in an environment that suits what they've brought look at bringing that athlete to the criteria to towards that look that they favored on the day and i think the quicker we learn that just as a as a sort of a continent really the better um our standards going to be across the board yeah i think it's better for the sport in general you know the yeah. bikini division like it's gonna make you know because you don't have to take all the substances you have to take to get that look exactly. um so it'll make the careers longer Mm -hmm. um, and then also, you know, you might, you'll see some girls from Europe come over and get a, get a first call out at the Olympia, which we don't typically see, yeah. um, you know, and, you know, there's a couple girls, you know, that come to mind that every time the Olympia comes around, I can't wait to see them walk out on stage and you just, you almost cringe at how hard they come in, mm -hmm. you know, and you go, man, that, that structure and that muscularity, if they just would, you know, go fill out or, or take, you know drink some water, whatever it is that they're doing to look that harder. Maybe they're just too lean. You know, you just haven't seen that, you know, a, a, a competitor for, you know, I think it was Priscilla linebacker was the last one that I can remember that was kind of like, you know, doing well at us shows, um, yeah. you know, maybe a Francesca, but you know, so that's, that's what you want. You want your best European competitor to come over and get compared to the top six at the Olympia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's that's it. That's how you make your mark, isn't it? And as a professional athlete as well, you want ultimately the Olympia is in the USA and, and there is a huge USA scene. I mean, I don't know whether you saw the pro card um, sort of thing that was shared on on Instagram about the volume of pro cards that were awarded in different areas of the world. And the majority are in the USA. They are they are studying the sport and they have access to 
the pro shows and and the best in the world so I think the sooner we familiarize ourselves and lean into that as opposed to leaning away from it the sooner we're going to have more of an impact at the Olympia at the Arnold and it'd be great to see as a representation of the UK anyway because we've got some phenomenal athletes over here it's just about oh yeah well Phoebe you know Phoebe's knocking on the door you know Ah, of of being super elite you know she's already won a bunch of shows but Mm -hmm. you know to be consistently in that first call out, that's kind of the, the, you know, the thing mm-hmm. I think every competitor wants, yeah. um, or just to be, no matter what show you do, you're in the conversation for the win. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it, there's no doubt in my mind that it's coming. There's just way too much talent over there. I mean, you know, obviously these Italian girls, the Russian girls, the German girls, like they have some freaky structures and beautiful yeah. flow. So, you know, it's kind of fun when you just, somebody comes out that, nobody's really familiar with them and then you see them in these lineups and then you kind of can't deny them Mm -hmm. this is the reality is is they're the future of of bikini so it's exciting like that 21 year old probably are going to see her in the first call at the olympia soon like these are the the younger maureens as well they're going to come up and take yeah i wonder if she's going to continue on and do that hungary show I, i mean yeah if i was her coach i'd probably just tell her to be done for a little bit because yeah. You know, she got to she stood next to three or four olympians mm-hmm. yeah 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 and i think with the the beauty of these shows as well in the uk is is we have that like so selena was obviously from europe we have people fly in from europe that you don't necessarily know so i can i can imagine the us you kind of know who to predict to which shows and you kind of know who's going to be in and around the area or who might come with our shows especially the, the difference with the u.s is that girls will do a national show and mm-hmm. if you're top five you're already qualified for the next year yeah. they might just shut it down and come back just for that national show right so you know the thing is girls here know the standards so well and yeah. honestly you know coaching now i don't let my girls just go to nationals it's a waste mm-hmm. of time if i don't think they have a shot at the win i don't let them go right mm-hmm. and so you're, you're having coaches take a more intelligent approach, people taking longer times off. So if you're just showing up at a national show in the States based on what you've seen at local shows, there could be a whole group of girls in your show you've never seen before, mm-hmm. but they literally were all top fives at nationals in December and they just took the year off and come back. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's interesting. It's more of a, a lucky bag, I think, for us UK. And not everybody loves the post on Instagram. You know, that's not, you know, there are some girls that, dark horses every week in the gym um it's crazy like you think you know you know like what you're going to see on stage from instagram but like there's people popping up left right and center who have been working in the background it's exciting yeah Yeah. that's why it was fun for me because i actually wanted to sit down and see like what the you know the npc show looked like and it looked very similar i'd expect like an amateur olympia or an arnold amateur to look like with the, the the caliber the top girls were all really good yeah. And even a pro level, you know, people who've been taking a longer off season, maybe are not posting their physiques as much. And then all of a sudden come out of the water, like, like Lorna Dunbar being one of them and um, Diraja really, like with her time off, like she's a come, come back um, and wow us all. So it's going to be exciting. Listen, this is going to be a very fun year. Um, Every year it's been kind of a, like a stepping stone for my coaching. Um, And then last year having two in the top 10 and, you know, this year, I think Ari's going to be pushing some of these top girls, you know, and yes. I think Brittany Hamilton's going to be pushing some of these top girls. And I think Lana's going to get, you know, she never got a career win. She was three yeah. times second, three times third <laughs> like that. She just had so many mm-hmm. points. She went to Olympia. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And I think this is where the sport is going to eventually get to where, like, for me, you know, I've always watched Kim Odo's career and just like, you know, there's been years where he had Angelica Teixeira, Janet Leigh. I'm like, how do you? And he would always say to me, don't worry, your day is coming. And I'd be like, you're crazy. That'll never happen to me. So, so um, no, it's 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 fun to get to work with like the most talented athletes in the world and kind of guide them. Um, you know, Daraja's really allowed me to learn a lot, you know, because she was my first, you know, it girl that everyone was talking about. And so um it's it's been nice to kind of be able to provide that support for other girls like you know you know Ari and Brittany and Atavia and Lana where I can kind of help guide them and go no 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 we shouldn't do this yes we should do this no you need to you know 
there's 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 a there's a there's a way to do this the right way that you know I'm still figuring out but um that's that's been the fun for me is like okay you know the scary thought for me is like gosh if it ever like if it's ever like Daraja and Ari at the middle of the Olympia you know like, oh you won't be at the back of the room you'll be in the car park. oh no I'll be at the bar <laughs> watching it on TV or something. Yeah, no. oh, but Paul, like honestly you just de- you deserve the success and, and yeah. I remember our initial podcast I was blown away like at, at, at how you spoke um just your level of coaching your knowledge and and what you do for your athletes I just really really liked your methods and connected with them and I think you deserve yeah all the, all the wins and and the great athletes I think you're a great coach so just it's, a, it's a forever learning process every athlete's different but I think you know and at the end of the day my whole focus is providing the best possible support for an athlete um not coaching them based on my ego but based on their what's best for their goals it served me very well you know I've I've you know, the list of athletes that I've spoken to that we, I turned down working with, you would probably be shocked at a lot of, you know, girls that are, you know, household names in the sport, but it just didn't work with what the way I work. And so sticking to the way I do things, um, has really served me well. And it's allowed me to cultivate a great environment, a great, you know, um, culture around my competitors and the athletes and the people, you know, that, you know, like you said, I, I travel with Steven, but I get to travel with a lot of the coaches for my team every weekend. And it's a hard sport to do if you're not happy. And I'm very, very happy. Yes. I think that authenticity as well, um, it goes a long way. Aligning yourself, irrespective of who approaches you, Paul, I think if you're aligned with yourself and you're you're not even in terms of a camp-based, like fixated method process, but you know what you can bring and you know whether that's going to align with an athlete. And ultimately, you're not only protecting your own space, but their space as well. So it's a, <laughs> it's an admirable position to be in. And it, th- this is what will accumulate the success and it is doing so. It's exciting. I can't wait to see yeah. Ariana as well. Yeah, it was yeah well, blew us out of the water. <laughs> Pitts, Pittsburgh is going to be wild because she's ready. Brittany's ready. Amy's looking incredible. Mm. Who knows if Ashley Kay is going to be there? It could be a a first call out Olympia preview. You know, like oh, um, wait, when is the clash again? Sorry. Uh, so the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Pro. Yeah. It's yeah, the yeah, pro. yeah. May. Uh, it's not the May fourth, but first mm-hmm. kind of first week of May time yeah. frame. So yeah. we're four and a half weeks out four weeks out I love that time when it's the the new york pro Pittsburgh. It's new york pro and then uh tech or I pittsburgh heard. pro back to back yes. yeah 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 is it the it's the warsaw warsaw pro as well before yeah the that's in utah that's in yeah. 10 days mm-hmm. yeah i can see go to one of these really well, this is it this is it <laughs> yeah we need to we need yeah. to we need, so we will we'll plan a visit we'll um we'll link in with you paul and we'll we'll get out there because just having a having the insight as i say this weekend with you and steven there and and watching um the shows here and we are fortunate in the uk people are starting to travel we had angelica over for the arnold's for example um and it's just it, we're, we're starting to see it but i think the more going back to what i said the more we educate ourselves in terms of what these athletes are actually looking like bringing their physique yeah their the posh everything about the presentation the more we know the more we can understand the more we can emulate and i think that's the route the route to, well i mean to for me this this london show it, it, it was just as easy if i flew to la so like yeah. you know considering next year if i have somebody that i feel like is at the arnold and needs to get qualified and that you know historically i don't like sending u.s girls to foreign countries mm. because we have so many options and yeah. I, and maybe there's more shows now, but I always felt like, man, I don't really want to go to Japan yeah. and bring Daraja and take a Japanese qualification because those girls have to fly over to the States and face yeah. 13 Olympians at every show. So um, maybe that'll change in the future, but I haven't historically just brought, you know, girls mm-hmm. over to, to international shows. Now, if there's a show with some prize money or some cachet, you know, the, the big evolution shows, maybe like the UK yeah. championships, some of those show European, you know, those may draw out some bigger names, but you know, it's, it's their strategy to that too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Everybody's game really. You can mm. buy wherever that's the beauty of Well, if you look at the show from this weekend, it was all Europeans. It was, there was not yeah. one American on that list. Right. No. So, no. um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 
wedding dove. You never yeah. know, Ashley might fly out just to I block a few in. Uh, <laughs> you know, and you never know. <laughs> she's got goals, and if you want to get to the Olympia, sometimes you're going to have to beat her. Um, yeah. But, you know, as soon as you see her name on the list, you know who's the front runner. Like, she's, yeah. you know, going to be gunning for it. The nice thing is, now the list comes out and that's the list. And I really like that. I think the first weekend of the year when it was, there was a clash in Orlando and then in San Diego, you had another show. Okay. Historically, I don't think Amy or Tara would have signed up for those shows. I could be wrong, you know, but I think they both signed up for the San Diego show. Tara had just gotten second at the Arnold and so mm -hmm. did Amy. I don't think yeah. they wanted to face each other. <laughs> could be wrong, you know, <laughs> Potentially, either one of them would have won the clash. The clash had no, you know, big front runners. It had two girls that have been to the Olympia, but neither of them even won. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it's um, I think it's going to be fun the way they're doing the the shows this year for the fans, for the promoters, for the athletes. There's going to be some really interesting lineups where there's just they're just wide open, mm -hmm. right? Whereas historically, yeah. if there was a lineup that was wide open, you'd get a girl that's going to walk in at the last second and take that one. Just yeah. take it. Yeah, yeah be interesting year very interesting year it'll be nice to watch it unfold but no yeah. it's it's been a pleasure as always paul um and we can't wait hopefully we'll get out there to see some of the u.s shows certainly like to do it this year so me and grace will probably be plotting in the background now to try and get out there yeah um, i mean if you got you got to come to the olympia it's the yeah. experience is it's it's oh, indescribable especially when it's in vegas it's just such mm. a great experience mm -hmm. um but any other shows you guys are interested in coming to let me know you know just stay in touch and if there if i can give you any advice or thoughts on you know how to how to go about it or which yeah, ones are good to come to mm -hmm. um i'm partial to tampa pro that's right down the street from me and that's that's the direct flight from virgin from heathrow right there so there you go yeah. plan planned yeah. <laughs> already <laughs> have a call after this yeah we'll see in Olivia, yeah in vegas in october perfect like no more fomo anymore i'm sick of all of <laughs> going by and just being like absolutely FOMO. and the time difference as well that kills me like yeah. you were up until all hours were today like 2 a.m like can't do that in new, yeah so i flew from hey, london to new york yeah, yeah london to new york and i think i was waking up at 4 a.m paul like i, I just yeah. could not not self-regulate and like it was two days before we flew back to Heathrow when I finally got my body adjusted straight back yep. in yeah but yeah. yeah well I think Vegas is about an eight hour difference for you so that might yeah. be so different that it doesn't matter you're just off yeah you <laughs> just you just keep going or just spend yeah. some time in a casino it's permanent daylight so you're fine you never know what time it is <laughs> yeah. the actual trick for me is exercise so if like you know, when I was over there, if I was getting tired, I would just go do some kind of exercise and it would kind of keep me going. Yeah. Um, but mm. Stephen and I were waking up at ridiculous times. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. Yeah. No. Brilliant. Amazing. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for your time, Paul, as always, on what you're doing for the sport. And uh, can't Thanks, wait. Thanks, Grace. Sorry I didn't get to meet you. I know. Someday. Next but, time. Best of luck this year with all of your athletes. We'll be keeping up to date and doing all the reviews and stuff. But um, yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. All right, guys. Oh, my good day. There we go. <laughs> oh, that would be so... <laughs>